Welcome to your Gov Nonpart Political Science and Government for Everyone. And today we'd like to talk about federal agencies. Now, many of these organizations might be called a department, an agency, a commission. They will have different names, but they fall into two categories those that are independent and those that are dependent. Independent agencies, we talked about in a previous video when we talked about the Federal Elections Commission, which was a independent organization, an independent commission. So those are created by statute, which are passed by the Congress and signed by the President, creating a law which creates the commission. They do not, however, report to either of those bodies. Therefore, neither the executive nor the legislative selective branch can remove an officer or a member from the commission. They operate independently. However, the rules that they make act with the full force and effect of law even though they are not statutes. Rules of independent agencies do act as law. Now, dependent agencies also pass rules which act as law even though they do report to one of the branches, three branches, of the government. In the executive branch, for example, each of the cabinet members heads a department. The Department of Defense, the Department of State, uh, the Attorney General, which heads the Department of Justice. These are appointed by the President, but must be confirmed by the Senate. Many sub-cabinet levels are also Senate confirmable positions. Their rulings have the force and effect of law. A good example is OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. Their rulings have the full force and effect of law. They are, however, part of the Department of Labor, a cabinet level agency. In the United States Supreme Court, they also have dependent agencies, such as the United States Sentencing Commission, which is answerable to the Supreme Court. The United States Congress has a number of dependent agencies, but they do not have those for specifically for the House and Senate. They are for the Congress as a whole. Examples of these would be the GAO, the Government Accountability Office, or the Congressional Budget Office. Also, the Library of Congress is a dependent agency of the United States Congress. Although the Library of Congress doesn't pass many rules, it has some, it doesn't pass many rules of the force and effect of law, the GAO is more of an audit uh, organization, but again they do pass rules with the force and effect of law. So, hopefully this explains what an independent agency is because there are about 74 of them in the United States alone, which seems like a lot, but it's not relative to the fact that there are several hundred individual agencies such as OSHA that exist in the country. Um, so independent agencies have to be policed somewhat themselves and this falls to the office of the Inspector General. Uh, the office of the Inspector General is in itself I suppose a, an independent agency and each independent agency has its own Inspector General who all belong to a group, the National Organization of Inspectors General, um, and that is correct incidentally. Uh, it's not Inspector Generals, it's Inspectors General, um, just a side note, and it would be same with Attorneys General or Surgeons General. The uh, plural is on the first word, not the second. These are the people who are responsible for making sure that these independent agencies are not engaging in any sort of malfeasance, in wrongdoing, in fraud, in uh, things which are unconstitutional. 
Uh, rules of independent agencies, and dependent agencies for that matter, are, however, subject to judicial review by the Supreme Court, um, just as any statute would be. A statute, you may recall, and we will cover this in more detail in a future video, is a law which is passed by both houses of the Congress and signed into law by the executive branch, by the President of the United States. Rules don't have to go through that elaborate process and some organizations, such as the Federal Elections Commission, only have six members. Some members are very small. And so they can make rules with force and effect of law with a relatively small number of people, making them agile and able to, to react to situations quickly but they are still subject both to the oversight of the Inspector General and to the potential for judicial review by the Supreme Court. So hopefully this makes you understand and, and explains the difference between dependent and independent agencies, gives you some idea of how many there are. I think trying to list all of them, of the 74 even independent agencies in the United States would be well, boring and, and probably unnecessary since you can look them up, but it gives you some idea of the fact that there are organizations within our country which make regulations which are not statutes, but still act in the same way as a law. So this is a good deal of where our body of law as the United States comes from. We hope you've enjoyed this installment of YourGov Nonparts uh, issue on independent versus dependent agencies. We hope you'll take time to subscribe above and you can always find us on Facebook. If you have questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below and we'll get back to you. Um, I encourage you to do that. I encourage you to take time to rate this video. And as always, thank you for watching.